When you see our next guest, you might notice a striking resemblance to a bushy eyebrowed comedian who was part of the original Second City comedy troupe and currently has a very successful show on CBC television called, I guess I can say it, Shit's Creek. The reason for that resemblance is that Fred Levy is Eugene Levy's older brother. Though Fred is not in showbiz, at least not professionally, he works with all kinds of comics and acting and musical headliners in co-producing the annual Gilda's Club Variety Show that has featured such homegrown talents as Russell Peters, Colin Mockery, Ron James, Martin Short, Catherine O'Hara, and yes, Eugene Levy, as well as many other veterans of the Toronto and LA comedy scene. Fred also works with the entertainment industry in his day job as an accountant. And according to Fred, that makes him the funny one in the family. <laughs> Welcome to Toronto Files, Fred. Thank you very much. And I, I know that, let's go way back uh, and to your uh, pleasant childhood, which I understand you had in Hamilton, Ontario. That's where you grew up. That's where we were born and raised. Yes, and uh, so tell us about your family. And, and where did the funny gene come from in your family? Were your parents a laugh a minute? No, 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 they, they really weren't. Um, none of us were a laugh a minute. Um, I think of probably the three of us. Um, my sister at times can be the funniest. But and she's the youngest. She's the youngest. Uh, but, I mean, Eugene was always the, um, he was, he, he liked performing um, for the family. And, and, uh, but one would never have realized where he would end up based on those early days. Mm -hmm. um, you were pretty close. Let's skip ahead now. You yes. got to be pretty close with the Second City gang that Eugene was mm -hmm. part of uh, when they were getting their start in Toronto and when comedy clubs were starting to spring up uh, in the city, Second City, Yuck Yucks and so on. You were especially close to the great Gilda Radner. Tell us about her and how you got to know her. And remember, too, some of our audience may never have known who Gilda Radner that, was. Boy, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. One of the great, great <clears throat> comedians of the 20th century. Right. It's not an the, exaggeration to say. No. no the, one of the original cast members of, of Saturday Night Live. Yes. yes. <clears throat> but, um, no, Gilda and my wife were um, a childhood friends. They grew up together, spent many years together, went to camp together, and... Um, <clears throat> Gilda, after graduating from the University of Michigan, uh, had a boyfriend at the time who was from Toronto, and she followed him here, and then they parted ways, and she stayed here. Um, but she was, I guess, uh, uh, a performing uh, artist at the time, I think. She probably studied at the University of Michigan, and she... Um, uh, one of the first shows was uh, in Toronto was Godspell, mm -hmm. and she auditioned for Godspell, and Eugene auditioned for Godspell, and, and they, they both were, made it. And they both made it. And Marty and, Short as well. And Eugene brought Marty in from yep. Hamilton um, to audition for the show because he thought he would be good for the show as well. And Marty got in, and. Um, um, I think Dave Thomas was in the original. And Victor Garber. Uh, Victor Garber was oh Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Yes, a wonderful Jesus. Yeah. <clears throat> and he went on to, it seems as though that cast, a, a good number of that cast, wound up becoming extremely, extremely successful in, in, uh, in, the, in, in the industry. In, in, the in industry, comedy but, in particular. Yeah. What yeah. was it about Toronto, do you think, yeah. that made it such a hotbed of comedy, I mean, is there something in the water here that that has given us the names you've mentioned, right. your brother? And then there's uh, Second City and Andrew Alexander, and starting at here. And what was going on? And then yeah. names like John Candy that we haven't yeah. mentioned. You mentioned yeah. Dave Thomas yeah. was part of that group. Sure. Mike Myers. It's an amazing legacy that Toronto has built in comedy, and now international film and television. Yeah. No, it's it's. You have to give Hamilton a little credit here because here. Okay. Hamilton was where Eugene was from, Martin, Martin Short, Short. Yep. Dave Thomas, yep. um, Ivan Reitman is not from Hamilton, but he got his start 
in Hamilton at McMaster University with the Film Society. Um, so that's how Eugene got to mm. know Ivan. And then, and then when, they, when Eugene came to Toronto, and, and it seemed as though they all migrated to Toronto. But I think in terms of a core of funny people, I don't think there's ever been three funnier people right. that have ever so I guess come from Hamilton. No. It's, it's the GTHA. Yes, yeah. yes, I there. would say there that. There was something in the yeah. water. Yeah. yeah. And then with comedy, I think there was things happening at the time that contributed to that. It was the, the movement of, of Second City from, like opening in Toronto from Chicago, right. mm -hmm. where they had uh, so many stars come through Second City Chicago. And then shortly, shortly after um, Second City, uh, Saturday Night Live started, and and with uh, Toronto's um, Guild of producer um, yeah. Lauren Lauren Michaels. Lauren Michaels, Michaels. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 An amazing cast. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. I think it was. It, it happened to be a lot of ex exceptionally talented people, combined with the fact that there were. These, these special venues, Second City, mm -hmm. and then eventually Saturday Night Live, um, that were coming into their own at that same, at that same time. Yeah. So I think it was just a culmination of, of, of all these things. What a nucleus. Yeah, yeah. And so um, let's now talk a little bit about Gilda's Club, which yes. you're very familiar with. You're still on the board, probably the longest serving board member. The but longest Gilda's serving, yes. Yes, uh, and not longest Trying suffering. to get off. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, tell us about Gilda's Club, uh, why it started and what its mission is. And of course, it's named after Gilda Radner. But um, tell us about, um, it was Joanna Bull and Jean Wilder, Gilda's husband, late, now late husband. Yes. <clears throat> um, who started this uh, Club. cancer support community? Why? Because well, they started a... Gilda's Club. <clears throat> Joanna Bull had been with the cancer support facility. Right. She was Gilda psychotherapist. Gilda, she was Gilda psychotherapist, and when Gilda was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, um, uh, she found solace and comfort at a facility called the Wellness Community in Los Angeles. And Joanna Bull, I guess, was the program director or whatever uh, at at uh, at the wellness community, and she got so much out of it because, as a high-profile individual, going through what she was going through with the loss of hair, uh, with chemo, and all the rest of it, it was one place she said she found where she could be she could be her own potluck. People bring food in all to be shared and you you relate to people who are going through what you're going right. through was there a comedy theme to gilda's club then because it's certainly been in the nature of the the club ever since you mean to the variety to, show to the yeah. well no actually to um comedy and um you know just uh, being able to laugh and yeah. support one another was part of the yeah. philosophy gotcha. Gotcha. yeah but yeah yes definitely uh for the variety show yeah she she um uh I guess in a way when she was there, people knew who she was, I guess she would have been her, her own sort of funny self there, but she didn't have to be um, self-conscious. Right. And she had said that she had wished there were more facilities like this for people to benefit from who, who were living with cancer. And then a number of years later, um, a Joanna, um, for whatever reason, decided to leave. This was after um, uh, Gilda's passing. Um, uh, she approached Jean in New York and suggested that they start their own, which had a broader appeal because the wellness community was primarily for adults, and adults are not the only individuals who are touched by cancer. Right. Children, adolescents, and, and the wellness community didn't appeal. Right. And the family and those, friends of people. And the family and wow. friends, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So it took a more, I guess, universal type approach to, to living with cancer and, and support. And, and with the programs, people would come together. The family would come together. They would have dinner at Gilda's Club. And then the, the, the person who was diagnosed with cancer would go to, goes to their group for support, and the parents, you know, or, or the spouse would go to 
a spouse support group, right. and the, the children of the adolescents would go with theirs. So, yeah. right. so they, they came together, but they but were... But it's social and emotional it's social support. And emotional. It's really underlying yes. the Gilda's yes. Club philosophy. Yep. And, you know, uh, the annual Gilda's Club variety show, yes. which is coming up, it derives its name, It's Always Something, from Gilda's book of that same right. title, It's Always Something, is something she used to say on, and, on Saturday yeah, night. Yeah. Yeah. Roseanne, 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 Roseanne
uh, on the Monday nights when they came up with that as a venue for a, oh, yeah. um, 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 a night to, uh, for Torontonians to do something. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got um, um, a Kayla Diamond, who's an up-and-coming uh, singer-songwriter. Um, uh, she'll be on the show. Do you have Colin Mockery Colin back? Mockery yeah, is he's been back a staple in the show. Every year. He's a staple every year, and uh, he's such a giving person. Yeah. He's been on our show. Yeah, yeah and he's, he's, he's a super. wonderful guy. Yeah. Not only does he perform, but when we need him to promote, you know, when we need him to do uh, um, TV sp uh, spots or radio commercials, because Bell Media happens to be our media sponsor, um, but Colin is, is you ask, and he's there, That's whether it's 7 o'clock in the morning right. or 10 o'clock at night. You know, we've only got time to ask you, how do people get tickets? Because right. I'm sure there are going to be viewers yeah. who would like to know. Tickets yeah. start $50, and it's Sony.ca. Sony .ca. Sony and the date, CA. it's happening on November, November the 19th, November which the is a Saturday. We made it special because we were going during the week, but because it's the 15th anniversary and we're trying to make it a big red carpet uh, extravaganza, we've gone to a Saturday night right. to make it easier for corporate sponsors. They don't have to worry about getting up sure. the next right. morning. So everybody should rush out and get their tickets. Everybody should rush out and get their and tickets. And they're still available, so... They yeah. are, yes. You know what, kudos to you and yeah. your team for putting this on 15 straight years. Good Amazing. luck with it this year. Yeah. It's a very noble effort. Thank and thanks for much. joining us. Thank yeah, you. Thanks it's a for, pleasure. Yeah. And we shall be back with more Toronto Files after this short break.